So here's what my concern was. And Mr. Macker, I want to be real honest with you because I, I had ordered an evaluation. And, Dr. and I, want to, I want to thank you. You're very cooperative with Dr. Davis. And so on cases, the cases that I find are oftentimes the most difficult cases is when I have, and, and you can disagree with me. I want you to understand that I, will not be, I, I won't be mad if you disagree with me. But what happens in cases where somebody has um, a possible delusional disorder, one, they don't think they have it. Of course. And then, um, and two, it can interfere with the ability of a really good lawyer trying to explain to you um, how to move forward with your case, how to um, do what's in your best interest. Yes, sir. And so what's interesting, and I thought Dr. Davis did a really nice job on this eval, is that I can have somebody who suffers from a delusional disorder and it's compartmentalized. It's just a small area that <clears throat> they're very set mm -hmm. on what they believe and think. And it doesn't affect their legal ability to understand or their legal competency. So somebody can go on with a delusional disorder as long as they're able to help their lawyer, as long as they're able to move forward with their case, as long as they're able to um, present appropriately in front of a jury. And so my worry about you was that when I talked to you a couple of times that I felt that the delusional issues were getting in the way of your relationship with your lawyer. And so that's why I ordered the evaluation. So Mr. Pitts, let me ask you this. To the best of your ability, if you feel like you can't respond, I'll respect that. Are you able to work with Mr. Macker in a meaningful way, or are the issues that I have impairing your ability to appropriately represent him? I think we're I think we're able to work together, Your Honor. I think he does have some concerns that may be valid because I think he does have I think he knew one of the deputy or one of the sergeants that was involved with the arrest. As long as you're able to work with him. Now, I will tell you that Dr. Davis picked up some of the issues that I was concerned about, but ultimately determined that he believed him to be legally competent. I think he's, I think he's very bright. I think he, you know, I think he's, he knows well, his case inside bright. and out. Um, I think he, he has been through a lot of trauma, so we have, he is going to start therapy. I have uh, um, therapy already uh, scheduled for March 1st. And I think that would be good because I think he had an ex-wife that passed away. He had a, was it a fiancé that passed away? And he's had yeah. some friend that passed, I mean, he's had a lot. Not a lot. So let me ask you this, Mr. Pitts. As long as he's getting some treatment and you feel that you're able to move forward and work with him in a meaningful fashion, then I feel comfortable, based upon Dr. Davis's report, making some findings on the record that he is legally competent at this point in time to proceed. If, however, in the future you have concerns, please bring them to my attention. On February 21st, 2023, you called me into court to determine competency, where you repeatedly attacked my psyche, calling me delusional over and over again, then turned to my fake attorney, Kevin Pitts, and asked if my delusions were preventing him from representing me properly. And Ms. Nichols, you did all this just 17 days after I submitted a 27-page complaint to Internal Affairs highlighting the fraud littered all over the, the clerk's website. What you did, Judge Nichols, is unethical, immoral, and highly illegal and shows that you were not impartial in this case. And at the very least, you should be, your, your position, you should be terminated.